Now that's what I'm talking about. So I'm here with Sam Hyde, the man banned from the Creator Clash. How are you feeling, Sam? Banned again, blacklisted again. No, no fun for me. Yeah, I thought I thought it was funny. Well, I didn't get all expense access to a <laughs> pussy. <laughs> no, I thought it was a funny a funny thing because last we heard from it cost me fifteen dollars for a <laughs> pussy. Yeah, I think she sells it for cheaper online. But uh, anyways, I thought it was funny how the last you had, uh, you know, the last I hey, heard... <laughs> come here. Get on your knees like a dog for me. <laughs> we got a few coins. Uh, no, I thought, I thought it was funny. He, last I heard from Ian, he uh, seemed to to be against the blacklisting of Sam Hyde and thought, hey, man, you could you could still be on YouTube. That was last I heard. Well, he said I could put on my own boxing event and I could go to that. <laughs> Pretty wow. cool. Yeah, Dust Bang is live. That's really wow. kind of him. So, um, yeah, I figured... Hey, Brandon, you, when you edit this, can you bleep the name and so they don't know who I'm talking about? Yeah, Jet, uh, Jet's, Jet's in the fucking uh, the pilot control, oh. so... Yeah, Jet, edit, bleep that so they don't know who I'm referring to. Yeah, so I figured it'd be good to sit down and do an interview with you, considering the entire video that I'm about to drop is pretty much centered around you being banned from the Creator Clash. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, by the way, for the megaphone here, the platform. Thank you, Brandon. I owe you one. My guy. <laughs> no, I appreciate you. Oh, big time. It would be uh, it would be corny of me to act like I haven't been a fan of you for a long time and been inspired. So, um, yeah. A lot of a lot of people, a lot of famous people are inspired by me, but they don't support. So I, I thank you. I take my hat off to you. Tip of the hat, sir. Thank you very much. No, Chris. of course. So Sam Hyde. Who who is Sam Hyde? Let's get into that. Uh, I'm really just a comedian. My friend, anybody out there who's wondering who I am, I'm a comedian, and my some of my content is a little bit too risque for the uh, for PG-13 people. I seem to keep getting banned from from this platform and that. I seem <laughs> to keep getting kicked off of everything for some reason. But that's about the that's about the size of it, really. Just an entertainer, man. Big thinker, uh, Buddhist prophet, activist, um, ghost of Kiev. Lots of different hats you wear. Yeah. All that. So you had a show on Adult Swim at one point. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we had a, uh, a show that um, got as many views as Eric Andre. It was the, the second highest. Uh, in, in its time slot, it was the first highest watched cable show. But it only lasted one season because we did a little sketch called Jews Rock. <laughs> and, uh, rubbed some people the wrong way, unfortunately. Well, I, mean, I don't know. Sorry, I don't know. I don't know who though. I couldn't imagine, but you know, you you recently were training ha Harley Morenstein, so I mean, you're some some anti semite yeah. you are. There you go. You you have a, a storied career with Idubs. Obviously, there's there's some reason why he wasn't <coughs> allowing you into this event. Uh, from your perspective, I mean, did you feel like you got Idubs into boxing? I mean, I def look, man. He before he uh, sparred with me, he was like a a 100 pound like computer nerd guy and then he came out here he did this kind of like weird hero uh he oedipal hero worship but hero killing in his mind thing he came out here to punk me but he ended up uh he ended up becoming fascinated with cigars and manual transmission slingshots and all these types of things um so his his claim that i didn't inspire him to box is fucking absurd yeah, it's funny. I, I I watched a, a recent uh, interview where he like doubled down on you know it was a thirty minute thing under a bridge. It had nothing to do with the boxing event. God, man, insanity! Come uh, on, at least give me that, I Dubs. At least give me that, buddy. Were you under the impression that you were going to be on this card at any point? No, I didn't think I was going to be on the card, but I didn't I didn't realize at any point that I was going to be fucking blacklisted from a charity event. That I bought five. I got five front row tickets. Uh, it was ten thousand dollars, and it's for charity. And supposedly, I'm going to be refunded this money. So I guess he he wants me not around badly enough that it's worth taking away ten thousand dollars from charity. I guess you would have fought on the card if he would have allowed you, but he wasn't really trying to do that, right? If he had if he had had me, I would have done it. I mean, that's. I don't, I don't expect him to put me in his production if he doesn't like me, but the fucking fact that I was banned from even watching it, that's what really rubs me the wrong way. I mean, that's kind of crazy. 
And he had the, it. Thing is, the thing is, man, I was going to root for him. I mean, I did even even watching him even after being banned. Deep down, the kernel of uh, my my deep desire for humanity to be healed, uh, which at the end of the day surpasses my dis disdain for all these people. Like deep down, I want him to be uncucked. I want him to get the tattoos lasered off, get a normal haircut, get rid of Yoko Ono. That's poisonous. <laughs> that relationship is poisonous. She's like his, he, she's like his entertainment handler. Like she's like a, she's his uh, fucking career manager now or something. She's got to go, man. She's gonna, she's gonna ruin his life. I guarantee it. Mark my words. Mark my words. That woman is gonna ruin his life. Um, no, I heard she's been ghostwriting all, ghostwriting all the best parts of Content Cop the past ten years. She is Idubs. That's what I heard as well. I heard. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, deep down, I want him to shed this cuckery, cuckoldry, and succeed. I want him to succeed. I even uh, texted him, and I had a moment. A tear fell from my eye. I had a real moment, though, where I was, like, pissed. Like, I was texting him, and I was, like, uh, I texted him about the refund. Like, are you going to give me this refund? Which is kind of like asking somebody for a refund after they get their shit pushed in by uh, a <laughs> fitness boxer. <laughs> like he just got humiliated by a guy that like hits pads for fitness and I'm texting him. Hey, can I get a refund, bro? <laughs> so that was kind of out of pocket on my end, but I need the money. Like it's not, it's not a small amount of money. Anyway, after I texted him that I texted him asking if he wanted help for the rematch and I 100% sincerely meant it. And if he had said, if he had said yes, I would have, I, I, he'll still to this day, if he says yes, I will give it my my 100% all to make sure that he comes out on the winning end of that next time around. But um, I don't think it's going to happen. I don't know if he's going to – I don't think – I can't imagine him ever being humble, um, at least not while he's under the controls of this, like, succubus uh, freak woman. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting in the doc that he did about you. He seemed, like, so, uh, unable to, like, roll with the jokes and things you were making. It seemed like he really did want to do, like, a Sam, Sam Hyde expose kind of video. That's the vibe yeah. I got from it, in a way. I mean, that's what it was. I, after, after the documentary came out, we put out a video that was our response to it. And that was, that was to give him an out. Like, that was to make it so that, like, as far as I'm concerned, this is this entertainment stuff. Like, this is how I make my money. This is how we keep our lights on. This is how I pay my friends to help me with this shit. Like, it's it's real, it's real shit. So him him putting me on in a video that gets a million views, even if his intention originally was to punk me, him putting me on that's a big deal. So we made our response, and it was like, hey, it's cool. I Dubs is a nice. I forgot what we said in that, but we were like, yeah, no, we were like. I mean, we do. We still believe that. We respect, like, it was a risk for him to put us on. Mm -hmm. He did put us on. He showed a lot of people uh, who we were. And we told him that the night that um, he pulled us aside, we were like, look, man, we're not here to punk you, bro. As far as we're concerned, you, you put your neck out there a little bit for us. Even though the weird vibes aside, uh, this is entertainment. You showed us to people that otherwise wouldn't have known about us. And that's, so, that's why we kept it light with our... Like I knew, I knew from the get-go that he was coming out here to punk, to make me look bad. And honestly, I knew, if, I knew from the first email what it was because I knew that he had been getting, um, he'd been getting a lot of shit from like 4chan right wing type guys because of his only OnlyFans girlfriend. And so I, I was just, you know, game theory. What's what's this guy thinking? He's thinking he's gonna. The, the shooter, the terrorist mascot, he's gonna make me look bad so that he can like get one over on the people that have been trolling him for having an OnlyFans girlfriend. That's literally what the, like, does that sound insane? No, that doesn't. That, sound that sounds insane because it's like, I'm trying to read someone's mind, but I knew that as soon as I saw the fucking email in my you inbox. read people's minds. As soon, <laughs> it's easy. Yeah, it's just, what, what is, what's, what outcome, could, what outcome do you think this person would want? You know, put them, to, put them together. I put them together in 15 seconds, I knew, from that email, but um, every step along the way, like we did the the gaslighting document, like none of that shit is at, is at IDUBS' expense. Like we didn't try to make him look stupid in the in the uh, 
in the way that we like sort of playfully flipped his his intentions. Like we didn't try to counterpunk him. But at one point he said um, at the at the tail end of the documentary when he wasn't getting the footage that he wanted, he was really upset, like like a, like an angry like child. Like he was pouting, he was fucking pouting in his car and shit. And he said, um, uh, not to me, but to somebody on the crew, he said, usually I'm the puppet master in these situations. What? Yeah. He said 100% on God, he said that. Usually I'm the puppet master <laughs> in these situations. That's how he views himself? I dubs the yeah, puppet I guess, master? I guess so, man. I guess so. So anyway, I think that's where the anger comes from. I think that's why he doesn't, he doesn't want me at his um, boxing event, even though I literally would have rooted for him. I would have been cheering for him. There would have been five people in the front row screaming at Dr. Mike, fucking with his concentration. And the outcome might have been a little different. I guarantee, I guarantee that I could have gotten into Dr. Mike's head. I guarantee if we had Frank Hassel down there, it would have been a, it would have been a different fucking outcome. It would have been a different outcome had we been in the front row cracking Dr. Mike's armor. Ooh, it would have been different. Been <laughs> even, with, even with you banned, <clears throat> we were up there like, in my mind, I was thinking, I still want Idubs to win. Mm. It's like it's it's like the man versus uh you know the powers that be like we and we still root for Idubs even in the fight yeah like the whole petty like he thinks it's two sided hatred or anger it's not man like yeah we, we want him to, win. We want want him want him to, to be, be redeemed we want him to be redeemed no but uh like as someone who has obviously viewed your documentary Idubs and then hung out with the crew all week like you don't come off as disparaging whatsoever and actually the more I shit on Idubs the more Jet was like hey like you know kind of dial that back that's not really what we're going for. Yeah. So yeah, you guys. Uh, I was pretty caught off guard by the whole banning, and I think most people were. And and if they weren't, it would come out in this video because I asked everyone what they thought, and only like one person said they felt you were deserved to be banned. Like I think we. Uh, you've looked at the footage yet? I haven't seen it. We probably have dozens of people, several creators with a million subscribers that are advocates for Sam being able to go, and they think it's fucked up. So it seems uh, it seems ridiculous the whole, the whole thing the the banning of, of Sam because at the end of the day you are a a, a draw and an attraction and you would you would you know you put seats uh, put people in the seats as well. I mean, we probably put uh, how many people were there just with our merch? Crazy, a hundred people with our merch. So that's our plan was to bring twenty T-shirts, give our YouTuber friends these T-shirts, and then when Harley. When Harley wins, we stand up with the T-shirts and we just support Harley and we go ballistic. But our plan, like we didn't expect the support of a hundred people already there in our shirts. Like we planned, we planned to carry the weight. But like there's people who already agree with us. So there's that's so many T-shirts out there. That's in our that's in our merch. So we're probably responsible for like 500 ticket sales right there. And had had he uh, come to me and like you know been like help me promote this thing, I would have gone grizzly mode on promotion. It would have been like twice. We probably could have doubled the stream sales, honestly, because yeah. all those people are nobodies. The only people that anyone knows is Dr. Mike, Epic Meal Time, and oh yeah, I remember Game Grumps from 15 years ago. Yeah, definitely that's not. The only, that's the only people that anyone knows. The rest of these people are like, my name's Tweezel. I stream poor. I stream Pokemon. Like what? I, I stream fucking uh, Peggle. I stream Peggle games. And I have 20, I have 200 viewers. And I'm ready to box. I'm ready to go. Who are you? I'll be honest, I did a deep dive Who on the- Who the fuck is Dr. Mike? Dr. Mike has 10 million Pakistani burner accounts following him. There's not one real person following Dr. Mike. I've been asking people on the street. I've been going, do you know Dr. Mike? Do you know Dr. Mike? Do you know who Dr. Mike is? Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? No, no, no. He's a nobody. Uh, apparently he's upset you weren't at the event. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, shout out to Dr. Mike for the support. <laughs> Bro, like that happened. I was walking like way away from the event and I saw him like on a back street. Like he definitely thought he was in the clear. And I just That's like crazy. pulled up on him like, yeah, it's Dr. Mike. Let me get an interview. <laughs> That's a big win, man. You're good with that camera, buddy. But yeah, Jet, I guess we should get into uh, the actual banning and how that all transpired. Because, um, yeah, I was at the event because Jet invited me and I was just going to do like a, a coverage of the event, like no Sam Hyde. Like, it wasn't supposed to even be about that. And then the day before the event starts, Jet goes to some like secret p party or whatever. I don't know. I wasn't invited. It wasn't cool enough. They wouldn't let me go. And uh, that's where Idubs pulled you aside, right? What happened? Blue checks only. Blue checks only. <laughs> we, were, we, were, we go to the YouTuber, Deep State, e celeb 
invite only pre-party. It's called a mixer, the, the weigh-in mixer, bro. We came up, all four of us, the worst case scenario in our heads, we're planning ahead, like on the car, and we're like, what if Ian's there? What if Idub's there? What do we tell him? Because we have a history and we're hoping we come in. We know Idub's gonna be there. We're hoping we come in, we see Idub's and he's like, hey, surprised to see you, you know? Wave, smile, I'd shake his hand. We're like, yeah, excited for tomorrow. But it wasn't like that. We walk in and the first thing that happens is, of course, worst case scenario, he's immediately at the front door. We lock eyes with each other. We look at each other, and for for a millisecond, we're trying to suss it out. Like, what is what is he thinking right now? What is he thinking seeing us? And is he expecting <laughs> Sam to come around the corner right next? But he looks nervous. Like, why why are four twenty year old nobodies making you feel nervous? Was my first thought. And then it makes us feel bad because we don't we know that like all beef aside or whatever, Idubs is like. This is not a small transaction he's making to make this happen. It's a big boxing event with a lot of money. It's a, a huge stress, deal. A it's, lot of stress for him. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's a massive deal. So we don't want to make him feel nervous walking up. Dude, he pulls Harley, epic mealtime aside. They go to the front and they're having this, I won't say argument, but it was an intense conversation. They're talking back and forth. And I'm like looking down like any second. Where, you know, here it comes. Sure enough, Harley comes back out. Harley is such a sweet kind dude man harley had no idea you were coming and when we let it slip that you were coming that you had tickets it was going to be a surprise for harley and he's like oh i'm gonna ask ian if, if uh sam could walk walk me out like harley and i think items recognize that because we we all came outside harley's like we gotta go talk to ian man there's a problem we go outside of the venue and um we go outside of the venue and there he is anisa ian and some other promoter guys out there, they're waiting for us. Harley doesn't want to cause a problem for Idubs. Neither do we. I feel like I feel like he might have said something like, if you don't take care of the situation, you're not fighting. Something like that. That's my crazy, crazy part of my well, mind. I, I would imagine that was the same thing, and Harley just wants to protect his own interest. You know what I'm saying? Crazy, yeah. crazy part of my mind is thinking that something like that was said. Which that's is what, that's what it looked like. That's, that's really insane. what it looked like. So we're, we're talking to him and we're trying to reason here. Here was Ian's a plan. He knew he knew about the tickets before we pulled up. He was going to ban all of Sam's tickets. He was going to refund them and none of us could come in. And it was going to be a surprise for when we first got there. Yeah, no gonna, he was going to wait until I, he was going to wait until I was in Tampa to spring that news on me. That was, that was his gift to you. That was his nice surprise gift. Yeah. Ha ha. Made you come to Tampa. Who's the puppet master now, Samuel? Yeah, exactly. That's good. It would have been him, gee whiz. But yeah, we spent 45 minutes in the parking lot with him and his girl just trying to explain we're not here to troll or punk you, man. Like, Sam trained Harley. Harley's fighting. We want to support. Um, he wouldn't believe it. No matter. So finally, we, we dump all our skill points into speech early on. That's how we do our builds. We bargained enough to where we got in. Unfortunately, we, like, we tried nonstop to get Sam in. Um, but it wouldn't work. At the end of the day, I was like, you know, this is your event. Uh, it's 11 o'clock. You have a fight tomorrow. Why am I still arguing this with you? I was like, all right, if Sam can't come, that's it. We shook hands and we left. Like, that was it. Um, it sucked. But, uh, you know, the, the least we could do was, like, us stay and support Harley. And, and, and I'm thankful we at least got to do that. But, yeah, that's how the conversation went. It was mad weird. Honestly, I would have – I would have – if I was Ian, why wouldn't the, the, the moment I saw us, why wouldn't he be like, all right, security, go. Get these guys out of here. If he really felt that way. But, I, you know, it was just a strange conversation in a parking lot the night before the fight. It's very intense, very cool. Wish we got it on camera. Ian did get it on camera, by the way. He had a camera, pretended it was off. I know that trick. We taught you that trick. He's taking notes. Classic. What's going on? Why are you holding the camera? Is it on? Oh, no, it's not? Okay. Just, yeah. ha just haven't put it down yet. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. from, from my perspective, Jet, like on the outside looking in, obviously, like it was my first time meeting you guys and everything, and you invited yeah. me to the event. Nothing was discussed about fucking with anyone or doing anything. Like oh. the whole and plan, you, you guys wrote a whole doc of ideas we could do outside of the event. The whole plan revolved around doing interviews and just having a good time in Tampa. We weren't trying to fuck anything up. You got the pregame doc, and none of it was, all right, let's pull the fire alarms, let's pants somebody. It was, no. there's pranks there's no jokes bro it was just hey let's here's a funny joke we could tell to it tell an interview sam's name didn't come up in the pregame doc ian's name didn't come up in the pregame mm -hmm. doc 
It was just fun and games, bro, that had nothing to do with fucking the event. We just want to have a good time. And you saw the evidence. Yeah, like that was weeks before we got there. There was no tomfoolery planned. Yeah, that's why it caught me so off guard. I was like, what? They're actually fucking banning Sam? Like, that's crazy. Exactly. But, you know, it's I'm happy we were filming because now, like, this whole episode is pretty much just about that. You have a bunch of different perspectives and opinions. And, uh, I'm you know, I think I'm going to call it, like, what really happened at the Creator Clash. And uh, I don't think, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how Ian reacts to it if he sees it. I saw a thing that was uh, create from Creator Clash. Ian's, Ian is looking for lighter weight opponents now. Yeah. He's got he's to come back and take it to Dr. Mike, man. You got to rematch. You got to avenge yourself. I don't think which he, I can help you with. I can help with that. Or listen, we should do. We were talking about doing a um, a video where even though Ian's not going to train with me, I can just show him on video how to do it. Yeah, like to address to him. Should we do that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. We'll put that together. We're going to put that together for Ian, and I'll I'll break down. I'll do a, a breakdown of the fight and make sure he knows what he did wrong there. The same way you did Harley. Yeah, yeah. The footage. I'm going to do a real. I'll do a real thing. Like it'll be. It'll be funny because it's a video that's like a open letter type yeah, thing, but I'm really gonna make it like a thing. I'm, I'm really gonna try to make it accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but uh, the, the, yeah, I brought this up in the beginning, but it's just it's just glaring to me in that documentary where he's talking to you and telling you 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 still have a career on YouTube. You know, you're not as blacklisted as you think, and then he like literally right. turns around and blacklists you from an event. Like it's stuff like this that's fucking your career up and fucking things up for you. <laughs> I mean, you're still doing great. I'm, you know, obviously, but. It's it's this kind of no, thing. Not. This like uh this gate. This, no, I'm not Brandon. Oh, he's struggling. Please subscribe. To the, subscribe, subscribe to the gun road. The gum road. MDE.tv. Hey, all you little fuckers out there being entertained, you gotta start paying for it. MDE.tv. I'll show you how to get muscles. No, I think there's a probably a huge crossover of our fan base. So I figure uh, probably a lot of them are already on your gum road and my Patreon. Good. Love it. And if you aren't, get on now. MDE.tv. <laughs> Need your I need it though. I need it, guys. I need it. I need it. I'm in trouble. I need it though. I need. A, I need like five. Can I hold five? Yo, can I hold five? All serious. All jokes aside, can I hold five? In exchange cool. for exclusive episodes, podcasts, Nick Roachford. We bust our ass with that thing. We make so much content. Yeah, no, it's good. I've been a subscriber for like I think three years, honestly. Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much for all the support and everything. No, of course. It's cool to be able to like. Uh, it's cool that I like have enough value to where like you know it's uh, you're down to be on the channel and everything. Because there's this video I've told Jet uh, to you like it's a green lit video of you in a car giving advice. You're talking about how it's really difficult to go from being a level two slime to something. That's like definitely that resonated with me massively. So. That um, is that is the, that is the trick is getting off the level level one slimes and the level two slimes. So I'm I'm hoping I'm like a uh, like a, a corporal grunt at this point or something. Yeah, you're like a level <laughs> you're like a level fourteen kobold archer now. Yeah. No. Just know that there's a lot of love on our end, man. We watch your videos all the time. I mean, we talk to your off about how funny this shit is, bro. No. We love what you're doing. You're we coming love up. You support us. It's just uh, keep the pedal to the metal, Brandon. You got to work. As hard as you can. Bro, he's got like 10 videos in the vault. He just hired. Oh, yeah. Tell tell, tell uh, Sam about like how you're hiring employees and shit. Yeah, I'm hiring uh, two full-time employees. That, um, nice. I'm buying a place. I'm going to be living with them. and Because I've done yeah. everything alone completely. Like all my thumbnails, my clips, all my edits, my planning, my dealing with brands. So it'll really be cool to have some help. Just tr uh, treat it like a... Um like a nine to five or like a better yet an eight to six job where you're because the, the problem with creative work is that a lot of people a lot of the time you'll be like, Oh, I want to, I only want to do this when I feel creative. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you really have to be chucking, chunking away at it. Like it's a, a blue collar job. And then um, also when you start to get momentum, it, as soon as you start to get the tiniest shred of momentum, you have to just keep doubling down and keeping the pressure on because there's a limited, there's a limited window to like when you're going to be famous. You know what I mean? Like you're not going to be, <clears throat> you're probably not going to have the same type of career or be making the same type of videos when you're 40 years old. So you have to like, if you're getting a little bit of shine and a little bit of money, it's time to like start hammering it. And um, don't, don't get discouraged if uh, either of your employees or anybody that you have professional relationships with, if, if you catch people that like lose their minds, because that's another thing is that, when you work with creative type people, a lot of the time you'll find people that are like talented, but they're, they have a screw loose. And sometimes it can be hard to, you know, it, it might take you a year to realize that a screw's loose or whatever. And then you can have these kind of like meltdowns where 
people people are like they just haven't like they're like ah I, I made the Brandon Buckingham channel. That's my, I'm responsible for those edits. Like a lot of, like a lot of weird stuff like that can start to crop up if you have the wrong people around you and just don't get, um, don't let that discourage you. Just if that ever happens to you, you just got to keep it moving. Just keep it moving and, and just treat it like professionally. Like don't engage in um, that type of squabble with people. If that comes up, just imagine that you're like a CEO of a fucking company where you'd just be like, oh, that's a weird person. I can't be into that anymore. I have to go this way and just keep it moving. That's the last piece of advice that I have. Yeah, that's good advice for sure. Uh, I, I feel like I'm gonna be learning a lot here because I've never had employees and I've always just relied on myself. So this is gonna be a, a new chapter in the show. Um, and I, I do want to touch on this, and, and I apologize if you guys don't want to touch on this. We can just uh, edit it out or whatever. But um, already, just from having you guys on my story and stuff, I've had some people uh, reach out to me wondering why I am uh, fraternizing with white supremacist, uh, anti-Semite, racists. And obviously, I don't view you guys that way, but I didn't know if you wanted to, in your own words, kind of touch on that. Uh, people that think you are just a hateful, violent person that wants like death to come to all that, all that are not straight white people. Well, I mean, honestly, I think uh, I think um, I think a good number of those people are people that are that were like former fans of mine that are just like uh, I don't know are glitch, glitched out and like hating hating on me. Like they would they would use whatever whatever argument was available to hate on me. Like it's not like they're actually. That's the impression that I get is that there's a lot of people that just hate me. I think it's like a there's a who's that rapper Jack Harlow. Yeah. One of his lines is, uh, oh, my, my biggest haters look just like me. Mm -hmm. And I've, it, over, the, over my career, over my like 10 plus year career, I've noticed a lot of people that like have glasses, are uh, tall and like fat. Went to and, art school. Uh, went, to, went to art school and like make noise music and like are just mad that like I'm, uh, I have a presence online. And that's like, that's the, that's the most common thing that I've, that I've seen, it's like um, uh, people, people like that. So that's I don't I don't think that there's a lot of people who are really like liberal or um, whatever who are like taking the time to message Brandon Buckingham about how much they hate me. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I just I, I just I can't I don't think that's I don't think that's the case. Like the people that have like <clears throat> Bernie bumper stickers and are like I feel like people that listen to Chapo Trap House and would have like a political reason to dislike me. I, I don't think they're messaging you, man. I don't think they're taking the time. Like, I just don't, I just don't buy that. I think it's people that are like actively following me and like have their antennas perked up for any mention of my name online. And they just fucking hate me. So I think that's, that's probably what it's from. Yeah. Cause I'm obviously not going to buy into it. It's my hunch. Yeah. I'm not going to, I'm not going to buy into it and sit here and be like, no, Sam's not this or not that. Cause I mean, you don't win, you don't win things that way. But, uh, from what I've been able to see from the outside looking in, like you working with people like Christ Dillinger, you know, you training Harley. I mean, that's a black guy and a Jew and you're treating them just like anyone else. So, I mean, yeah, I think at this point, any type of political argument is like, it's just a wash. Like it's not, you're not going to get anywhere. And, um, I think people have pretty much sort of picked, so picked the sides that they're going to pick. And at this point, it's like basically up to the CIA to manipulate people into whatever <laughs> opinion they want them to have. That's what I was going to say. Anybody so it's who's... not worth it. It's not worth the time. Yeah, that's my other theory. They're either haters who are going to use the most effective argument or they're paid by the government. That's my that's my crackpot theory. Any, any, anytime anyone doesn't like anything I do, they, they must be... CIA, FBI. Gangs, this is, well, this is the number one gang stalking victim in the nation right <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah, they're always after They're always man. after Jet, man. We were at Creator Clash. I saw the white Ford vans. Dude, I was driving today and I saw a, a red Dodge Ram 1500. You know what that means? It, dude, I, I, it was red. Red's the we've color seen, of blood. We've seen that 30 times. And the last time, the last time we saw it, it was on the blood moon. Yeah. Was, yeah, run I, those numbers. They code it. They'll, they'll bring out the red cars. They use code. Room. That's called a double red, mm -hmm. and uh, double red is like right under magenta. If you see a double red code from like your stalkers, that means kill you, kill you, kill you. you That's what they're saying. That's what they're trying to say to you. You have to go into hiding for like the next forty-eight. Yeah, because they can only do it for a brief period after the blood moon. It's complicated. Yeah, but um, yeah, that's probably what's going on. Thankfully, there. we have we have uh, seven hundred and seventy-seven MAGA warlocks. Casting counter hexes and counter spells <laughs> at all times. 
that shit that you sent me, those runes that you sent me, we crushed them. We turned them into dust. Maga warlocks. Dust bangers. Fuck all that witchcraft. <laughs> Fuck witchcraft, witchcraft, bitch. Fuck you, devil bitch. Die. Breaking news. So they don't know. Devil bitch, die. Fuck you. Stop manipulating eye doves. Stop manipulating eye doves, bitch. Uh, that's the new the, the headline. <laughs> Sam Sam, Sam Hyde against witchcraft. Yeah, well, we got fuck. We got the team. We got the MAGA team casting counter hexes at all times. Fuck out of here. Yeah, no, I think I think the whole uh, the the bad rap uh, is bullshit. Like meeting the meeting the guys and everything, uh, just seeing like that they're genuine good people. Uh, I think all that the, the, they try to make you guys out to be like hateful evil people is insane. Well, look, they need a they need a heel. They need a villain. Why not me? Why not <laughs> Ross? But yeah, we can we can cut it here if you guys want. I really appreciate your time. Uh, it's cool to talk to you, Sam. Like I said, I've, I've been a fan for a while. As uh, with with you, Jed, I'm excited for this fucking edit, dude. I think this is gonna be a, this is gonna hey, be good. I'm not sleeping until it's done, bro. For real, Jet's the edit maestro. He's gonna get you right. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you again, man. I can't thank you enough for the the backup here. It really means a lot. We need we need a help at hand sometimes, mm. and like it, it's deeply appreciated mm. that you're helping us for big real. time, big time.